My name is Nick Carter. I'm an anthropological archaeologist specializing in the classic Maya civilization. I grew up in a suburb of Houston, Texas. Uh, my dad was a systems analyst for various uh, petroleum companies in downtown Houston. Uh, my mom was a writer and later a teacher at a community college. Um, I went to school at the, at the local school just down at the end of my street in my lovely tree-lined subdivision. Uh, I actually dropped out of high school when I was when I was 13. Uh, it really wasn't working for me, and I and I homeschooled myself for the next few years. I started in academic epigraphy and archaeology after I met my future wife, Katie Lukacs. Uh, we were living in a small house together with a couple of other friends in Austin. Uh, she was taking courses at the University of Texas. Uh, an epigrapher, David Stewart, had recently started teaching there, and. Uh, she arranged for me to start auditing courses with him in my hieroglyphs. Well, besides the epigraphers and archaeologists that I've been privileged to work with, I'd say my biggest heroes are the pioneers of decipherments in other parts of the world, uh, Champollion for Egypt, uh, Michael Ventris for Linear B in the Mediterranean. Uh, and for the Maya region, I think, uh, I'd say my two biggest heroes would have to be uh, John Lloyd Stevens and, and Frederick Catherwood, who in the early 19th century uh, went down to what were then pretty exotic and uncharted parts of the world from the perspective of most Americans. Uh, they traveled around the Yucatan Peninsula and uh, the central Petén and uh, northern Honduras, and they documented sites like uh, Palenque and Copan and Chichen Itza. And what was really remarkable about what they did was that uh, Frederick Catherwood was uh, just an incredible draftsman, and he had access to uh, what was then, I guess, a, a pretty revolutionary bit of technology, the uh, Camera Lucida, which allowed people to draw basically from light with, with high degrees of accuracy. And so his visual art, probably as much as anything in the, in the prose of the books that they wrote, uh, ended up popularizing the idea of a Central American civilization to an audience of United States citizens uh, who had no idea that such a thing was even possible. If I were doing anything else besides what I'm doing right now, I'd probably be doing what I was doing before I started doing this, which is working in a coffee shop for slightly above minimum wage. I had no direction in life before I started doing archaeology. Well, I was always surrounded by technology from the time I was, I was very small. Um, my dad was a, was a systems analyst, and so he worked with computers uh, for a living, and he would bring computers home and make sure that we always had access to them. And, and uh, we're always playing with and experimenting with them. I think the, the first computer that I really used on any kind of a regular basis was a, like a 286 PC with a, a CGA monitor. It was really, you know, pretty, pretty primitive by today's standards, but uh, I thought that thing was awesome. I'd spend hours on it. Digital technology is present in every aspect of the work that I do. It's really central. Uh, on the research side, virtually my entire library is on my laptop in PDF form or in ebook form. Uh, it's pretty rare these days that I'll resort to a, to a paper book unless I really need to, because I can carry around almost my entire library with me wherever I go. I can take notes and highlight without worrying about damaging uh, a valuable paper book. Um, in the field, we use digital technology in everything we do. Uh, we use digital cameras to document our excavation units. Uh, we play around with those images later in Photoshop to make them clear and to make them fit the, the rectilinear outlines of our excavation units. I think the millennial generation may be the first generation in the United States, anyway, in a long time, that has the expectation that we're not going to do as well economically, on the whole, as our parents' generation did. At the same time, we have access to just untold wonders that previous generations could never have dreamt of uh, in terms of collecting and sharing and documenting information. Um, and when you combine that with our generation's sort of uh, distrust of institutions, which I think is not limited to our generation, but is perhaps more widespread in our society at the time when we happen to be coming into our own, uh, I think we have the potential to be a really transformative generation in the, in the way that uh, 
maybe the baby, baby boomers were. Uh, although that kind of remains to be seen.